All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, sorry being for being a little late. Just got into some something that that was okay. So someone has already started recording. That's wonderful. So we are already recording. Good afternoon, Ivan. Thank you. And I see a lot of people are already here. So <laughs> no, Liam, that's not a problem. And I just sent a message. That's why. And uh, for that thank you very much for your messages and uh, uh, let me share my screen and i would like to discuss today about this so i have a sort of unusual screen today uh, like again i was i am on a single screen right now so um so if you have a message if you want to say something like you ask question Please, uh, uh, please, you know, maybe unmute yourself and say say to me. I might not be able to look at the chat frequently. OK, so this is our session for programming JavaScript. And actually, we we started our week five yesterday. And we started some very interesting discussion on on some of the concepts that uh, that were not relatively new for you guys, but let's see that how we just go about that but we started talking about the objects object data type and we saw that uh, there is one object da data type as like in dictionary in python that you use and uh, that dictionary or that object data type is a very interesting one and in how to access that to access those uh, like you know, object like notations we have dot notation like again by using a dot operator or we have an index notation that we can use for accessing the indexes so if you are if you are accessing through the indexes we will use the step then we started talking about the object and its properties and we see that there are multiple properties in one object and then we saw that we can just log out the user and then i told you that we can even include the functions inside the prop inside the objects and let me just uncomment that for a second and just to show you something so we can even have like the functions inside that one and these functions as we know that if someone will call that it will access its own variable this variable of logged in and it will make it true this logged in logged in or is equal to false so we then discussed that if you want to make multiple users if i mark it comment back i can create like this user one is equal to bob smith and something like that user two is equal to first name christina last name lee and this one so you remember we could create any number of objects but again, for creating those objects, we will have to always use the same code over and over. Now today, I'll talk about another very interesting aspect, but first of all, let's review the previous lecture. Then we talked about constructor function. We saw that, okay, instead of writing the code over and over, why not you do something? You define a function, you define a function with the capital letter. Remember the capital letter? And if I did not mention that yesterday already, so I'll mention it over here that a constructor function always, always starts with a capital letter. Make sense, everyone? It should be starting with a capital letter. You should have like it should. So function user, and I said that one, two, three, four, it is taking four parameters. And again, for those who are a little bit like you know, struggling with the concept of parameters, it can be any name. So I've given F for the like, you know, first name, last name, email, and then level. So we say that it will take those values. It will set up the values with, with some of its own variables. So it will create first name, last name, email, level. It will create a department and set HR for everyone. This will create a logged in for, like you know variable and and set up false for everyone. So there, are these properties, these two properties will be common for every object, though they will have a different first name, different last name, different email, different level, but they will have these these two properties will be common for every one of them. Then we saw that okay, we can have a function. This dot logged in is login is equal to function. Make again make my logged in true. This dot logout is equal to function. Make my login equal to false. So that's that's one constructor that we can use. And if we have this constructor, I told you that I can use these three ways of creating the objects. And now I will have these three objects that I can use in my program. Right. 
and then you know we saw that we can we can we can take out different values out of it etc 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 now there came the question of var and let and const and i'm really uh, like you know i am really hopeful that now you guys understand this very clearly what is var the scope of var is a function level scope and it is just only recognized in the in the body of the function where it is declared and then let is a is a, another way of defining variables but it has a block level scope wherever the block we have just defined that it will be just you know visible or live live in in that block otherwise after that block it will just get died constant a constant value that cannot be taken once defined cannot be changed you know this is a a bit of shaky definition i'll talk about that even though this is definition is 100 percent correct const is a value that cannot change but we'll see a different different shape of that one so we talked about this var let and const so i'll just you know comment that one because you know it was the variable discussion and i have to move back to our previous discussion but first of all i'm just opening up the chat for myself just to have a have a quick uh, uh, you know and, and think that i can have a look at that one is everyone with me are you getting that this review that we have just reviewed what we have done yesterday and today i would like to just continue with some of the things because i want to give you a very nice, uh, very nice thing over here. OK, Mallory, thank you. Uh, Ethan, hi, uh, thank you. Uh, very time. Thank you. Right, so let's go back. OK, so actually, I'll continue with this concept of this constructor. So what I'll do is that I will copy this from here and mark it comment, and I'll just do this again for today, right? Just for the purpose that we have. Now, I want you to focus on something very important. Whenever I create a new object of a class, uh, like of this constructor, I have created one one object, object name is Alan. Second object, name is Bob. Third object. Now, this might be possible that I need to call Alan.login. I might call it. I might call logout function with bob logout make i make all that one maybe i say chris dot login something like that now try to understand what i'm trying to say here even though like if i will be needing these pro these methods then i will explicitly call them if i need them i will call them i will never call them so for example if i don't call n and i say just okay i don't Okay, am I back? Looks like there was a there was an internet glitch, something. Am I back with you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yes, all good now. Okay, Tina, thank you. Tina, thank you very much. So see here. That broke. Five. Let's come to that one, and now I can run more script.js. So you see that I'm getting the I'm getting the object over here. Now, interestingly, the point I want to make over here, whether I call or not these two functions, whenever I need, whenever I create a new object for myself, do you know they will be they are, they will always be part of the body of the object. I'm repeating that and I want you guys to just, you know, try to understand the concept. Whenever I create a new object, even though I call or not, these two functions will always be the part of the body of every object that I create. Does that make, oh, I'm not sharing the screen. Valentine says that share screen. Uh, uh, my screen is not shared, Valentine. It was shared until a moment ago. Oh, 
Okay, just give me a second. Uh, is it is it there now? Looks good now. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, Tina, thank you. Oh, I understand. So when I open up the 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 Teams window, it might have it might go freeze up. Anyhow, so if you look at that one, are you guys understanding this one? The concept that whenever I create a new object, the body of the object will contain all these things, and these two functions again, whether I call it or not, whether I call them or not, they will be the part of the body of the function. I hope that's making sense to everyone. Now, what what I want to make a point make here. JavaScript provides a concept called prototypal inheritance. Prototypal inheritance. What does it say? I will. I will just you know prototypal inheritance. What is prototypal inheritance? JavaScript says that all those methods or properties that we don't want every object to carry we put them in the prototype of the constructor method now what does that mean i'll just let you know it says javascript says that you you create this object see here like you know like create the the constructor create the constructor and i'll, I'll just comment this previous out right because I don't want to want them to hinder something. So now JavaScript says that if there is something that you are that you might not want to use over here, like you know, that you may or may not call during the during the execution, rather than defining them inside the function body, remove them from there. I'll comment that out and pay, place them in something called the prototype of this constructor. What is the prototype? User dot prototype. Dot login is equal to. Now see here. Now I have taken this function out and I have stored them something which is called prototype user dot prototype dot login. I'm saying that in user constructors prototype, I'm defining a function login and that function will do this. I'll do the same with the logout function. Come here. I'll say the prototype of user prototype dot logout equal to function. And this dot logged in is equal to false. I mean, if you are understanding what I'm saying, so it, virtually what I've done, I have deleted them from here. So I'll take it a minute, you know, so just to make things life easier. I have not made these two functions part of the body of the object. What will be the benefit of that? Look at the benefit first of all. So I say let Allen is equal to new user Allen. Beth. And what was the third parameter? It's uh, email. So and then at Gmail. And the last one is the level. So I'll say level two, for example. Now, let's see how many of you understand that. If I console dot log, Ellen, and I console dot log Ellen, and look at my output, I'll just make it bigger so that. You can see both of the outputs. If I just run it again, how many of you understand what I've done? Because I might have thousands of objects in my program. So rather than putting this login logout function inside that so that it does not become the part of the body of the object, I have placed that into a something called prototype of the function, no prototype of the constructor function. Now, is that login and logout available for my disposal? Let me check that one. So you see that right now it shows department is equal to HR level three that falls. And if I just come here and I say Allen dot login. And I again print this one. I mean, if you understood what is happening now. 
If I need that function, I can always call that. And you see that when I call that, it makes it true. To start with, it was false, but I call that function in my program. I call that function and after, as, as I call my function, what happens is that as I call my function, you see this function is not directly the part of the body, but it is somewhere in the prototype of the user from where I can access it properly. Can I have someone respond respond to this one? Are you guys understanding this? What I'm saying? What I'm saying? And again, you might don't see the screen, and so it should. Generally, you're understanding. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Where you saved it as a user prototype, does that mean it's only available to user? Yes, exactly, exactly. Even it will be only available to the user. You know, even what you can say, you can say that it's actually in the prototype of the user. Now, I would like to show you something very interesting. This is our browser that we were working with in front end, but I want to show you something. This prototype is nothing new. You, you guys already know this, and I'll tell you why. If I go to console and I say var um, something is equal to, like let's say var name is equal to John Smith, something like that. Now, look at that. If I say name dot length now tell me did you create this length length object from with this one no this was automatically this automatically came with the object of name name has a lot of properties that i can see so if i write name dot you see that how many how many functions are available with name dot and where are these name functions i want to see that where are these functions if i just write this name or rather if i create another string let's see if i another create another string i say let name is equal to new string you remember we can create a string like this as well and i say john smith right now if i write name look at that when i say name it says it's a string and it has john smith value not only that if i open this one this arrow it says that j o h n all of these are stored in an array like that and if you look at that here do you guys see the prototype word here Prototype. What is in the prototype of this string? If I open that, there are all, all those functions that I can apply on that. They are in the prototype. So when I create a new string, they automatically do not become the part of the body of the name. But when I, if I, if I use that, they are basically where. If I go into that one, I'll find out. Oh, there is something called prototype. So in string prototype, these fun even are you getting that in a string prototype, these functions are defined. In every prototype, like when we are creating, we are basically, why did it change from false to true? Oh, uh, so Jennifer, it's actually, you know, how did how did it change from false to true? You know, because I called this function. Look at there, Jennifer, do you understand? ln.login, when I call this, this function is accessible because it is in the prototype of user. So it accesses that and after accessing it, it changes the logged in from false to true. Jennifer, you getting that one? Okay, understood. That's wonderful. Uh, even, even, did you did you get what I'm what I, what I was just I was just saying in my in my wonderful. So it's actually in the prototype. So prototype is something which has lots of things, but they are not they directly never become part of our string. They are not directly part of a string. But if I want to use that, you see name dot two upper string two upper case. This is not a function that I have defined. This is a function that was coming from the prototype. If you look at the prototype of this string, you'll find two uppercase. I'll show you. You see two uppercase is a method, is a function, two uppercase. I getting that one? Length, trim left, trim and trim. They're all functions which are with the string and they come up in the prototype of that. In the same way, in the same way, what we do when we define a user prototype, what we do is that we define uh, like something that we don't even even you 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 might come up with this idea. You say that Naman, since department and logged in variables are also going to be you know default one. You are just taking these four. Why not you take them out as well? Okay, you see. So it's not only the functions that can go out. Variables can go out as well. So you see here. If I say user dot prototype dot department equal to hr. For every object, the prototype, every object of user, the department should be HR. User dot prototype dot logged in 
equal to false. By default, make every object false. Now look at that. This is very interesting. I've even taken away this one as well from this one. And that will that will really really do something cool for me. What it is doing now, if I run my program, if I run my program, do you see that the object that is created, the object that is created, it has only one, two, three, four fields. And do you see, <laughs> do you see for the second time when I have changed the logged in value, it has applied like, you know, it has accessed that logged in value as well. Why? Because I have just changed that one and it is accessing that value over here. Make sense, everyone? So even though it is not there, but it now it is not there over here. But when I change the value for that one, it has come over here and it says that now logged in is equal to true. But by default, logged in is not available. Does that make sense to everyone? Because if you understand that one, I would I would really like to talk about something else from now onward because there, there are a lot of other things interesting. Everyone with me, Ethan, Jana, and Manny, uh, Manny, because I have not seen Mohammed. Are you with me? Are you understanding? Everyone is with me, so let's move forward. Thank you, Jana. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Jenny. Uh, Jen Janiel, this is good. Rebecca, thank you very much. Okay, let's move forward. So this is the way, this is called prototypal inheritance. Now, what is prototypal inheritance? All those methods and properties that we don't want every object to carry when they are created, we put them in the prototype of the construct method. We can call them when needed, but they would, they would not become the part of the code when we create when we create the objects. Right, that's wonderful, and I hope you guys are understanding that. Now, I would like to discuss one more thing, which is very very interesting. This is, we are continuing this one, and we'll we'll talk about this a lot again. But I wanted to talk something related to yesterday. Do you do you guys remember that yesterday I was creating object like this? Our user is equal to user is equal to. So I say first name. When I was creating the users, like right. So for example, I say Alan Smith. Again, I will keep the same names. And last name. I'm about to tell you something very interesting that you would really enjoy. So last Smith. Let first name is Alan. For example. Oh, why not I copy the user from previous one? Why in the in the world I'm typing? So you know we created this user object in the in the beginning which without the without uh, without this uh, you know um, constructor. Let me just copy this one. Control C, Control V, and I'll uncomment that one. I want to show you something. So we have a user object, you know, without without constructor. We have just created one user object. If I say that I want to create not user, I want to create users. Objects. Now, how would we do that? I'll come here and I'll write let users is equal to array. Make sense, everyone? I want to create an array. Now, array of what? I would put three users, three user objects into that one. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? What I'll do, I'll copy this part from here and I'll paste in the first curly brackets. Save, first curly bracket. Now, I'll paste the same in the second curly bracket and I'll paste the same in third curly bracket and then I'll change the values. Now, what I'll do, the first one is Alan, the second one, I'll just change the value with Bob and why not let's change the email. And I keep in logged in is equal to true for him. And I said, say level is one. And I come over here and third in is again, Christina. Sorry. Christina, and let's say change the email because I'm, I want to do, I want to show you something, how you would access the values. Uh, logged in is true, false, and the value, uh, the level is four, like that. Are you guys understanding that I have got the array now? Array of objects. Like I don't need this one anymore because I was just showing that for the example. This is an array of objects. Array of objects. 
Now, if I ask you, how many of you understand if I write console.log users of zero? Can anyone tell me without running? What will be my output over here? If I if I print users of zero, what will be my output? Users of zero. Yes, who will tell me what will be my output? If I write users of zero, LN object, that's wonderful, LN object. Not all, Katrina, it will be LN object. And see, let's see, let's run that one. Let's run that one. I'll run that. I'll just come here and I'll say, you see, just LN object. So Katrina, just look at that. Because users of zero means only the first record of this array. And the first record of this array is this object. Now, Katrina, I, I have this question to you. If I write users of zero dot last name, can you tell me what will be printed out now? Katrina, can you answer? You know, you'll, you'll understand that because I want you guys to understand. What will be the output now? If I say zero of uh, like last, wonderful Smith. Rob says Smith. Katrina says Smith. That's wonderful. Smith, because now it will be just accessing. Now, you know, you know why I'm discussing that? Because there were there were few things that you were not understanding too much. So I, I wanted to talk about that. Now, if I want to run all the first names of from out of these users, I can first name, for example. So if I, I'll say if I say first name. So I want to print the second one, console.log users of one dot first name. And let's type it again, like third time. I'll say users of two dot first name. Now this is, I've just given you an example. Do you think this is the good idea to, to, to access every first name like this? Never a good idea because you don't know how many elements in array would be there. Are you guys getting that one? So rather than writing this like this, so it will, it will just give me all the first names. Look at that. Alan, Bob and Christina. It is giving me all first names. But it's never a good idea. What is the good idea? Like again, what is the proper way of doing that one? The proper way is the first way. I'm again telling you those those looping that we have learned. First of all, I use var. For example, I say let i is equal to zero, i less than now. What will be that? I will say users dot length. Go to the less than of the users dot length and i plus plus. Now I'll say console dot log. And I would say the users of I dot first name. How many of you understand this? Because you know, if you understand this, you are already getting the concept that we are trying to discuss it. You see, just using a for loop, we have done that one. Everyone gets that? <laughs> you understand for loop? I've just used the for loop and printed that. Angelica, thank you. You understand the concept. Got it. Wonderful. Uh, uh, the Jennifer, do you, do you with me? Yes, exactly. Could be millions of records. For loop, that's wonderful. Now, now, not only for loops. I would like to talk about some other that that were confusing a little bit. You know, there there was another one. If I just come here and I say, users dot for each, users dot for each, and you know that it receives a function. Take one user out, and apply a function. And console.log, the same thing, but again in a different way. I'll just say user dot first name. Do you understand the second type over here? Exactly the same thing. And again, Jennifer, please don't get confused. I'm trying to make it again, simplifying it as much as possible. Users dot for each function user, take one user at a time and just console.log user. Make sense, everyone? Now, if I just print that one, of course, it will it will again do the same thing. It will again do the same thing. Now, this same can be written in arrow function, arrow function syntax as well. What does that mean? If I just come over here, I keep this one and I say users dot for each. And here, instead of writing function, I write a parenthesis and I put, put a user there. And I put that one and I say console.log user dot first name. Now let's run that one. Do you guys see that it is still working for for each? Now this this is quite interesting. 
I have records and I can have millions of records, as someone said. Right. They were very right. We can have billions. And, and by the way, just to make it interesting, I will copy and paste this Katrina multiple times, like Christina multiple times. This one, this one, this one. I've, I've, I've pasted it maybe four times because, you know, now Chris, Christina should appear five times. Oh, there is something wrong. I might have missed some syntax. Yeah. So I'll just do control Z because. OK. Yes, so I, I made a mistake somewhere. Let's see that. Yes, yes. Actually, I, I did not copy the comma from previous one, so that's why it was making a problem. More control Z, more control Z, more control Z. Now is it good? I think it is. It should be good now. If I print that, I'm just, you know, yes, so they are three one. Now I'll have to just, you know, put a comma and after that comma, I'll have to paste this. So I'll paste one more record over here uh, till this point. Control C. Another record and I put a comma, another record, I put a comma and another record. So I just added four, five records, right? And now if I just run this one, if I just run this one here, if you look at that, Alan, Bob, Christina, Christina. Now, not only this one, you know that I can I can call, I can bring out anything out of this user. So I can say, for example, user dot email. User dot email. I'll get all the emails over here. Are you guys getting that one? I hope you're in. now. This is users dot for each like, you know, implement something on you on every value of user. Did you guys understand this for each with the with the arrow function? I hope everyone is understanding that one for each with arrow function. Can I have a quick feedback on that one? OK, zero. This zero is an index position used to access an array element. Yes, yes, exactly. I didn't think it was an area code and that's when we're using zero. OK, uh, so someone was asking a question and we did the reg expression. Didn't zero means, for example, the entire phone number. Oh, OK, OK, OK. So Jennifer, you are just you know trying to mix two two different things. <laughs> Here it is a bit different. Hopefully you got the answer from your colleagues, but I think uh, that would be. So you guys have done this kind of thing with Peter, I think you know, uh, reading out the data. But of course you never remember that what what that typical thing is doing. Now if I just tell you another interesting, very very interesting thing. If I just come here and I say let new users equal to users dot map user and so user dot first name dot to uppercase <laughs> look at that how many of you understand this if i run that one and and if i print this new user new users and I just, you know, I'm just stopping this one. I don't want this one to run. Clear. Look at that. Are you guys, you know, someone was confused about the map function. What map function is doing? It is mapping one every user with the first name to uppercase and just returning that. So we are getting a new array king being created. For each does not automatically creates a new array. Even if it is returning, you know, that's a, that's a different story. We'll have to catch that one. But over here, it is just returning the values and we are getting those stored in new, new users. Users.map. And this users.map is very important. I want you to do a little practice, uh, a lot of practice. <laughs> yes, new array with yelling, you're right. Now, now, you know, not only that we can do this kind of things. You see, you can do a lots of lots of wonderful things over here. So for example, uh, you know, you can you can apply regular expressions over here. You can apply all types of functions over here. You can say that uh, trim all the first names. For example, first names might have multiple spaces and here and there trim that and then return that. So for example, I'll, I'll show you something. I'll show you something. If I go to my records and you know, before Ellen, like the first name, I give multiple spaces. And after that, I give multiple spaces. Sorry. I give multiple spaces. Same ways I do this with a Bob. Like I give some spaces in the beginning. Christina, I give some spaces in the end. 
And this Christina, I want to give some spaces on the beginning and in the end. Something like that. Now, if I hit, if I run that one, you see what will be the output. My output is again, you know, it's very vivid because it is converting that into the in the capital letter. But of course, there are so many spaces. So do you guys remember that? What we can do? We can chain up the functions and we can we can do a very interesting thing over here. We say user dot first name, first of all, trim it. And then to uppercase. Just introduce another function in between. Hit save. And now, now run, now run our program. Now run our program. Did you guys get it? What what we are doing? Are there any practice questions this week? We are we missed Monday. Alan, um, uh, Alan, uh, what I'll do is that I'll try to publish some of the questions. Or you know, we missed that on Monday, and I think the coming Monday is also. I don't know. It's coming Monday will be will be open. Like you know, it's it's again another. Uh, I think it's a it's a government holiday. I don't know if about the next Monday, but anyhow, uh, any case, Alan, I would I would try to. Uh, you know, I would try to give you some uh, some practice questions, you know, here like, you know, maybe upload that practice questions for you, right? Alan, that we missed, right? So we have next Monday and Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the week after. And yes, yes, Mallory. So yeah, you're right. So we'll just talk about that one. Okay, so did you guys get it? Like, did you guys get this? This one? This is very interesting. You can do a lots of lots of interesting things on like it, I have done the first name, you can do that for the email. For example, you say, I just want the emails back. So it will just return in a new array, the emails in the capital letter. Emails should be all converted to the capital letter. Right? And what, what else you can do? You know, there are lots of lots of interesting things. You can come over here and you can say user dot email. You see here, I'm just, I'm just saying a different shapes. I'll just make it comment. And Copy this. So see here, I would say, look how many of you people understand what I'm saying. User dot email dot starts with A. Just return those emails which start with A. Uh, now it is not returning the emails. It's actually returning what? It is just telling true and false. It's telling first one is true and or rest everyone is false. If I want to return the email by itself, we'll have to just you know here it is just checking the email and it starts with a true, false, true, false, 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 whatever. And we will we we can just put a condition that I want the complete email. I want the email out of it. Whatever I can just do that. If if it starts with C, so how many trues and false we have? Look at that. If I run this one, you see it's true, it's false, false, true, 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 true. All those which starting with Christina will be, or you can impl implement a lots of lots of other logics over here. You may put a curly bracket and put a logic because here I'm taking just one statement being running over there. So now, would you guys be able to play with this data, the object data that we have? Like, you know, we can have thousands of millions of data and you want to play with that data, you can always play with that with that one. So for example, this was just mapping that I was doing. You know, even if you don't want a map, you don't want to create something, you can always play with this for each. So you have for each and you will run a function. You will take one user out and you would say, you would say, for example, in curly brackets, you would say that if user dot first name dot length is greater than for example, you know, something like that, something like four, five. Do something, you know, <laughs> you know, do something or, you know, console dot log that. Console dot log user dot. Let just user whenever the length is greater than five, just print the user that complete user. So see here. It is printing out, of course, everyone is bigger than that one, so it is just printing them out. And what I can do is that I can just to make it interesting. Just to make it interesting, I go there and I make some of them less than five. Christina here also less than five. And let's make one of them. Oh, I've given the abnormal spaces over here just to clean that one. So I'll just make it as well. So now if it if I save and if I run that again. You will look at that now it will just return those values which are greater than five so 
ln is not greater than five, and then you know it it just basically gives whatever. So wherever there are spaces, of course it will give that, and wherever there are not, it will. So you can play with this data, whatever you want, whatever way you want. Are you guys getting that one? You can play with data. And and by the way, if I ask a question, did you guys do something like this in your programming script one, where you you were basically not understanding? So so you have to. OK, Nathalie, no, no problem. Yes, check email domain letters Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday or off the week after. Yeah, so the 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 week 15th week, week for 15 has three days off because of a conference going on. You're right. Uh, who, who mentioned that? I think Alan mentioned that. So they are off because of uh, because of the conference and uh, that's really a disturbance. And, and by the way, <laughs> Just for your information, I will also be in Newfoundland for those days. Um, Annie would be would, would be also there because we are all coming for the conference. But ironically, we'll come on Sunday, and we'll I have to leave on third like Tuesday night. Yes, so used for each event. That's wonderful. So you guys use that. But even does does that does that make much more sense now? How to how to access the data and how to play with that data? Does that make much more sense now? Now you are comfortable a bit more in understanding the understanding how to access the data. I'll just make it right. You know, it's, it's very bad. So is that has that played some some changing? No, no. Next class next week we will have all classes. Next week we'll have classes. Conference week is after that. Like you know, it's 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 a start with fifteen, right? So next week. So if I show you the calendar. Uh, next week we will have all classes as per schedule, but the the week after 16, 17, 18 are off, and we'll have only one class, you know, scheduled one class on on Friday. Uh, sorry, on Thursday. On Thursday we'll have that one. All right. So this is this is how we just you know talk about these things, and we have got uh, this one now. You, this users dot for each is very very important. You can always play a lot of things. You can you can use the regular expression to impl implement on that one, and you can do a lots of lots of wonderful things that that might be that you might want to might want to do. So uh, this is something. So again, one thing that I would like you to just take away from here is the constructor function and prototypal inheritance. Are you guys understanding this prototypal inheritance and, and constructor function? Everything clearly. Do you guys understand that one? And by the way. We have reached to a point where we are about to just merge into like as I, as I told you, uh, our both courses will be merged into one because I will be discussing the same topics over the week. Because now uh, I will I, we start this way and then we just you know merge at some point of time. And as I told you that we'll be having our first uh, uh, first QAP as well. Oh, sorry, second QAP as well. Uh, that will be coming this week, some sometime late this week, and uh, you will be getting that one. And we'll be trying to work our way with 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 that with that qap right okay so let's continue and let's talk about a little more topic rather so you know in this in this part i was just trying to talk about this one let me just show you so if i ask you this is the data if i ask you to do something in this data Let's let's do that. So can you write a code like this, maybe for each that all those users from these users who are logged in, like their logged in is is true that like, you know, if you have if you see only Bob's logged in is true. So you may want to change some maybe some others as well. For example, you want to change this Christina, this one. I want you to show the records that have a logged in equal to true. Can you guys just try that out? Little code. Just for the practice purpose, I want you to write the code that will just bring out those users which are logged in. Uh, Marlana, are you informing that we don't have a class next week? Like yes, ninth maybe yes, ninth ninth, ninth also maybe off. It's a very disturbed weeks. Okay, yes, thank you very much, Marlana. So that's that's something that might be a problem. OK, so I'm expecting some someone. 
uh, someone will be sharing the code. Again, all those users which are logged in true, I want their information only. Who have their logged in is true. Will I get some code from someone? Manisa, can you try it out? Rebecca, Janiel, Ethan, and Manny. Manny, I would be waiting for your code as well. Can you try that out? Yes, I'm waiting for someone to come up. Uh, okay, yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yes, that's very much possible. Even and how it is possible, I can just make a comment today and October 4 JavaScript. Let me make it will be there now shortly. Uh, even code will. Yes, I'll be happy to see some some of you coming up with a solution because you know it's it's something that you have already done before, and it's something that uh, I think you would like to I would like to do because you had that before and you had a little problem in understanding that one. Hopefully now you will be able to do that. And as I said, I will be sharing some more practice questions. I'll, I'll stop sharing for a second and I'll stop recording as well because I won't be discussing anything new now. Today it was a shorter session, started late and ending earlier. So I would be sharing some practice questions with you for the functions as well. Just give me a second and that. But